Jeremiah was not a bullfrog. <laughs> Jeremiah 17. In verse 5, let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is a man who trusts in man. Cursed. Cursed. I said cursed. Cursed. <laughs> cursed. Curse is caused by an act of rebellion. It's a rebellion towards God's ways. It brings a curse. Remember, when there's a curse, it's also known as a spell. Any act of rebellion is called a curse. Does everybody get it? It's called witchcraft. In fact, we'll talk about that in a minute. But Curse is caused by an act of rebellion against the ways of Christ. It's also known as a spell to cause misfortune. Sickness puts limitations on an individual's life. A person can fall into distress. It's an open door to witchcraft where the devil has access to steal, kill, and destroy. This is a curse. Does everybody get it? Can a believer have a curse? You betcha. You may be blessed in one area and cursed in another. Amen. It says here, curse is a person that trusts in themselves. Look at it. It makes flesh his strength. So he's all about self. We, we talk about this all the time. Whose heart departs from the Lord. Now, it doesn't mean that a person totally departs from the Lord. It means that they've compromised their heart to the Lord. So they've taken back some of their heart and not given God their complete heart. That person is called cursed. It says, verse 6, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. No matter what he does, he just can't get filled. Amen? And shall not see when good comes. In other words, misses opportunities. These are opportunities from God, but they can't comprehend these opportunities from God. Because that curse has blinded them. What? Because of what? Rebellion. Remember, every curse is called the curse of rebellion. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed, blessed. What's blessed? Blessed is favor from God. Life abundant. <laughs> blessed is the man who trusts in who? The Lord. And whose hope is in the Lord. In other words, there is no compromise. For he shall be planted, like, uh, planted by the waters. Be like a tree planted by the waters where there's constant refreshing, isn't there? There's no dryness which spreads out its roots by, its river, by the river and will not fear when heat comes, no matter what's coming across. There's no fear. There's complete trust. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. So there's no fear and there's no anxiousness. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. It says here, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind and thoughts, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So bless his favor from God, life abundant. Listen, life abundant doesn't mean you work yourself to death. Hello. That's not what, life, that's not what God called us to do. He's, in other words, he makes a way. To bless his people. But when there's a curse, it shuts his hand to areas. Why? Because rebellion. A curse must be broke in. <laughs> Removed and dispelled. Remember, it's a spell also. Through searching the transgressions of agreement that caused the beginning of the rebellion. Many people just repent and go on. And they wonder why there's limitations on their life. They wonder why they're constantly getting sick. They wonder all kinds of things that are happening in their life that is just not from God. Because there's many open doors through a curse. 
That's all it takes is one rebellion for the enemy. Remember, it took one agreement in the garden caused rebellion. And they were removed from the presence of God. Does everybody get it? I'm telling you, we need to know this stuff. We've talked about ancestral curses, self-imposed curses, temporary curses. But I'm telling you, people are, are being cursed. Don't understand the fullness of a curse because rebellion is the curse. Amen? Any act of rebellion towards God's ways or his commands is a curse. And it must be broken, removed, and expelled. But there must be a search with a transgression, which means the act of the influence to do such a rebellious act. You may think, well, man, it was, it was compromised. It was nothing. Oh, but it was everything to the devil. And it's everything to God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28. Praise God. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. In verse 1 and 2. You know, people don't realize that even touching agreement with certain things Uh, brings a curse. And, you know, many people don't realize that there's a Mason curse. People's family have been involved in Masons. That's a curse. Why? Because they're a cult. There's many religions that are a cult that seem wonderful out there. But anything that compromises the Word of God is called rebellion. And that doctrine brings a curse. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his requirements or commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. Now, I'm not going to go through all the blessings. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can take time for that yourself. But we're going to go to verse 15. What does it say? But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his requirements or commands and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And there are a bunch of them. So you may look this through and find out if any one of these is on you. Hello? That means there's an open door somewhere where you haven't gone back to shut it. He says, by disobeying the voice of God, amen, that's called rebellion. You will receive a curse. You know, we've talked about this before. How many times have we made commitments and didn't do them? Amen? Amen? Vows, unfulfilled vows, made promises and didn't do them, brings a self-imposed curse. Amen? But we must repent for those things because, see, you can go to that source right there. You know, I made a commitment. I didn't do it. I repent for it and break its power and remove that spell and dispel that spirit from me and shut the door to it in the name of Jesus. Because it was an act of transgression. It was an act of sin. It was sin is the presence of evil. And to cooperate with its presence or its voice brings a curse. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. Hallelujah. The teaching is called touch of victory, so we're getting there, okay? <laughs> we first must expose all of the stuff. Hebrews 1. <laughs> and verse 1. Let's speak the first four verses. 
God who at various times in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in his last days spoken to us by his son Jesus whom he has appointed heir over all things through whom also he made the worlds who being in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Everyone say the word of his power. His word. Amen. Upholds everything by the word of his power or the power of his word. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become much more better than the angels, as he has uh, by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, in past time, God spoke through prophets, then through Jesus, and now through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is now revealing the words that were written by and spoken by Jesus. Amen? Activating them. So now he's upholding all things by the power of his words. Is everybody with me? Galatians 3. Actually, there's another place I'm going to go to. I want to go to Malachi for a second. Malachi 3. In verse 8, Malachi 3, verse 8, what does it say? Will a man rob God? Well, would you stand before God and steal from him? You'd have to be plumb nuts. Yet you have robbed me, he says. But then people say, well, how we robbed you? And he says, in your tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a what? Cursed. See, God gives opportunities. We just talked about it. That curse brings blindness to the opportunities. Opportunity to what? So. Everyone say so. So in the kingdom. It's not just financially. It's sowing in the kingdom. It's assisting. It's helping. People spend more time trying to gain their own, build their own empire and make money to pay all the debts because they keep getting themselves in debt. And that's what the enemy loves to do is get an individual in debt. That is called a curse also. Because it's disobedience to God. Would God want you to be in debt? No. Hallelujah. That's what we repent for. I need debts. Amen. Lord, forgive me. You know what debt it was. You know when you signed that thing and you knew we weren't supposed to. Amen. So you go back to that area. You repent. Lord, forgive me for signing this and agreeing with this. I shouldn't have done it. It's rebellious towards you. I break that curse off and I command that spirit to go. And leave me and loose me and never put limitations on my life again. Boom, it's done and over with. Amen? But you got to go to that place where it originated from. Amen? Oh, happy days. So he says, cursed are you, for you've robbed me, even this whole nation. He says, bring all your tithes into the storehouses that they may be food for my house. And try me on this, says the Lord, that if... I will not open for you windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that they will not be room enough to receive it. In other words, it's going to overtake you. Now, listen, just because you obeyed him one time doesn't mean you're going to get flooded that day. It doesn't mean you've got to get rent warehouses and storehouses that day. Amen? It's not all going to come that day. It may take a period and process of time. Why? Because God's going to check you out, man. Are you going to be consistent in that? Are you going to bless yourself or are you going to curse yourself? (laughs) Amen? What is curse? Rebellion. It's rebellion. So again, what we want to do is this is where you got to take time with the Lord, man, and go back to every area that you know that you are rebellious of and break that off. Or you'll continue to be Repeat the same thing, sicknesses, pains. This. You won't be able to reach to your healing until they're all broke. Hello? Galatians 3. Let 
Remember, he said, oh, anyone that disobeys my voice receives a curse. Galatians 3. You know, I had a whole nother, on my heart, I had a whole nother something to bring cross. And man, the Lord slammed me with this this morning. He says, my people don't, are destroyed. They're being destroyed, not realizing about the curses they're bringing on themselves. You know, we've been freed from the curses, and then we bring them back. Uh, verse 10, please. Galatians 10, or Galatians 3, verse 10. Everybody okay? Yeah. Let's speak it. For as many, now let me tell you something. The spirit of religion is an open door for a curse. People become religious. They're cursed. Why? Because it's like a relationship. I'm going to explain to you about this here in a second. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curses everyone who does not continue in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Those are your commandments. Ten commandments. These are not command. Uh, does everybody get it? These are not relationship with the Lord where he commands you to do something. These were written commandments, and they were to expose sin. Amen? They were just to expose sin. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just live by faith now. That's relationship. Yet the law is not of faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. Well, nobody can live by them. Nobody can upkeep them without the, power, the anointing of Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, this is so powerful that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, listen. So this is an area where when people are trying to um, self-justify, amen, I'm a good person, I no longer drink, I no longer do this, I no longer, I'm no longer doing pornography, God has set me free from, from these things and from that and whatever, and he, that, I'm not saying that he hasn't, but a person begins to rely on what they've been freed from, that self. God healed me. God did this. Well, now you're relying on yourself. Does everybody understand this? Any area where you begin to rely on yourself will bring an open door to a curse. Why? Because it's rebellion towards God. Remember, we talked about the talents and abilities and so forth. Amen? Rely on yourself. That brings a curse. Self-righteousness, I'm a good person, no longer drug addict, alcoholic, pornography. Self-justification is rebellion. Why? Because it's a partaker of the tree of good and evil. Anyone that partakes of the, good, of the tree of the good and evil receives a what? Curse. Because that tree does nothing but promote what? Rebellion. Amen? In Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, you are not justified by your works. You're justified by your relationship. And let me tell you this. Don't miss the opportunities of God. Too so. Too so in, in, in the physical, in the area, but because you're so in the spirit, laboring on to the Lord. Amen? I mean, don't get me wrong. Tithes and offerings is wonderful. It helps sowing. It helps the kingdom. Amen. He says, bring your tithes and offerings to the house of God so you can bring Bibles and so forth and feed, clothe, and shelter those that are in need. But there's an area where you sow. You labor for the kingdom. You participate in the house God has planted you in. Rebellious towards that will bring a curse. Deuteron what did I say about Deuteronomy 18? Oh, happy days. In verse 9. How 
Hallelujah. Let's speak it. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. Whoa. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. That's now called abortion. Brings a curse. Anyone participated in it? You have a curse until you what? Repent and remove it. Break its power. Or one who practices witchcraft, which is rebellion. Or soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer. One who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. People are, listen, this is where Catholicism will really mess people up. Why? They're still praying to the dead. You don't pray to the dead. You bring a curse on you. Yeah, but I speak to my aunt so-and-so every night. You're an idiot. She can't hear you. And you can't hear her. It's called a familiar spirit that's deceiving you, trying to bring a curse on you. Remember, the devil's purpose is to get a curse on you. Amen? No matter what it is, your aunt, your uncle, your grandpa, your grandma, the only one thing you want is a visitation from Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. If you're an abomination to the Lord, you think you have a curse? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> woo -hoo. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed you for such. Have you ever gone to a medium? Have you ever read your horoscope? Have you open, ever opened up a, a fortune cookie and read it? You're cursed until you repent for it. It's, think about this. They allow in the schools to bring the horoscopes and whatever it is. And they all speak about it. But they're cursed. Our, our kids get cursed because of what the, the government allows them to do. How about accursed items? Touching the green with accursed items brings a curse. Pornography and everything else brings a curse. It says here, for the Lord your God, verse 15, will ra raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. In other words, God has now released his Holy Spirit, amen, for all of us to hear. Through his written word and through his voice. And if we will obey, we will be blessed. If we disobey, we will be cursed. And you will realize curse will prevent you from moving, from getting healed, from prospering. There will be a limitation. Then you wonder, well, how come so many people are wealthy and they're not cursed? They are cursed, many of them. But they've been cursed by the devil, which is called blessed by the devil. So it distracts. Remember, distraction is the number one thing the devil does. Amen? But there's nothing wrong with being wealthy to that degree. Does everybody understand that? God wants us to prosper and be wealthy, but our heart must always be about expanding the kingdom of God, not about self. There's no need to build a 40,000 square foot home if you live with just you and your wife. Unless you decide to rent out rooms and rollerblade from one place to another or something. Hallelujah. So we're to, uh, anyone who follows abominations of that nation's traditions, because it's rebellious ways of God. These are rituals, religions. But there's no relationship or no fear of God on in these individuals. They live a life out of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And it brings a curse. Amen. Think about this. How many, what's the word pharmakia mean? Black magic, witchcraft, and what? Sorcery. Look at how many people are on mental medications and they are constant. They're cursed and they don't realize it. That's when we try to bring people into the discipleship house. Man, get off of those medications. Why? Because you ain't going to get free until you do. Unless there's a supernatural divine intervention, we'll go, boom. You know? But that's an accursed item, pharmakia. That's why drugs and, sort and all of these things, uh, that's all accursed items. Cigarettes are accursed items. All of these things, what does it do? It certainly isn't bringing health to the temple of God. If it's bringing damage to the temple of God, 
It's an accursed item. And you will receive a curse for doing it. Amen? Oh, happy days. 1 Samuel 15. Hallelujah. How about a lie? If you lie, you think it'll bring a curse on you? Yeah, to you what? Repent. Remember, anything that's rebellious towards God that you agree with will bring a curse. Amen? So in this, we want to go to every area where we know that we have sinned, fallen short, transgressed. We want to go to that place of act. Repent for it and break it off. And remove the spirit. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. It's just for you. You know, many people that are up and down individuals, they're emotional leaders. <laughs> they're usually under a curse. They're emotional worshipers. You know how they do that? Only if they feel like it. That's a limitation, isn't it? It's a prevention from getting into God's presence in the fullness. Does God desire to get in God's presence? Yes. Amen. See, the enemy loves to distract, doesn't he? That's his number one thing. It's called deception. It's distraction. I lay the first Samuel 15, verse 22. Glory. First Samuel, I'm going to Deuteronomy. That's why it doesn't look right. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Let's speak it together. So Samuel said, he said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in what? Obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Does everybody get that? And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. These are all cursed. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being a king. Now, rebellion is witchcraft. It's a curse. And, you know, there's area where there's rebellion or dishonor to the Lord that people have committed towards God. Those are curses. Amen? So, in this, again, we want to con constantly look at the area of where it's originated. Where did this originate in my life? You know, we can break ancestral curses off and so forth. But there are certain things that you and I have done in our life that we must go to the root of or the origination and break it. So that there is the fullness of God and his benefits to me and you. Amen? Amen. Go to Samuel 16, verse 14. It says, now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Why? Because he committed a rebellious sin or curse, which is witchcraft. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. In other words, God lifted his presence of protection from Saul and a curse from Saul. Rebellion came with a distressing spirit. Now, a distressing spirit is known as a tormenting spirit. Amen? People are tormented. They have mental issues, physical issues, emotional torment. Only to manage. See, now listen, because this is important. When we get into God's presence, we're able to manage certain things. He can't free us until it's under the blood. Does everybody get this? So there may be curses in your life that all of a sudden you get free every time you get in God's presence. Amen? It's man but after a period of time, it's always returning. There's not a freedom. It's because you get the strength of the presence of God to manage that. But then it wears off. And now you're back into that same condition again. Why? Because... It has not been removed. It's not been dispelled. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. 
That's why sickness repeats itself. That's why all kinds of things repeat itself. That's why people still make wrong decisions and purchases and still get themselves in debt. That's why they're anxious. They're fearful. Amen? You got to, you know, you got to cooperate, repent, expose, uh, remove, dispel, and set in place the presence of God. Psalm 141. You know, David said, I pursued my enemy. Again, we talk about in God's, you know, many times things that you're struggling with are, are uh, an opportunity for whatever you're struggling with is coming to the surface. Don't ignore it. Destroy it. Psalm 141, let's speak it. It's a prayer for protection from the wicked traps. What is he trying to do? Trap you into a what? Curse. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked ways. Now, wickedness is associated with rebellion, isn't it? So that means we're, they're cursed. That's why they're called wicked. When, when, with men who work iniquity and do not let me eat of their delicacies or partake of their traditions. Let the righteous smack me. It shall be a kindness. <laughs> yeah. And let him rebuke me. Oh, people don't like correction, let me tell you. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against the what? The deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff. Now I want you to understand that before we got to, for there's still my prayers against the deeds of the wicked. These are prerequisites, something like that, for warfare. Does everybody get it? <laughs> there are requirements before you warfare, or your warfare will be nullified. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave as, one, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, my Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. That prayer needed, needs to be prayed right there. I'm telling you right now. This prayer needs to be prayed by everybody, at least for once a day for a week. And then whenever you're led afterwards. Because the enemy is setting traps big time. Look at everybody that got jabbed is cursed. They got marked. They're cursed until they repent. And many people won't repent. They just think they're just going to go out and get jabbed again. They'll get jabbed till they die. Remember, a curse allows the devil to what? Come, steal, kill, and destroy. So if that's happening in your life, there's a curse somewhere. And it's our responsibility to search it out. That's where your relationship and time with the Lord. Lord, show me where this is, where its origination is, so I can destroy it. Amen? See, people are just lazy sometimes. They don't want to be free. They'd rather live a life of management. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be free. I'm going to be prosperous. And I want to be a sign of wonder to the glory of Christ Jesus and the price he paid for me. And every one of us should also. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 103. It's all preparation, he was telling us, to attack the spirits of wickedness and their hosts.
Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within. How do you bless the Lord? Praise and worship. Amen. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, will his benefits be released where there's a curse? No. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who, you know, you think, why aren't enough people being healed? Because there's a curse there somewhere. It's not been targeted. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Snap. Yes. Benefits to all upright believers. This is our blood purchase portion of healing in Christ Jesus. Amen? Is he paid the price for us. See, but there is a battle that you and my, we must do. We must press in. We must press in to receive that portion. We must press in to receive that benefit. Amen? We must press in no matter what. Hallelujah. We press in to receive. And Hebrews 4. Hebrew 4. Verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Now listen, this rest doesn't mean you just hang around and twiddle your thumbs. It means you're trusting and resting in the Lord. Amen? No matter where you are. People think they can go home and go to bed and quit their job. Get a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience, which will bring what? A curse. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. Account. Now listen, this is powerful because it says disobedience is rebellion, brings a rebellious curse. The words of God are ammo. They're ammunition. It's ammunition. Everyone say ammunition. To be placed in weapons. Does everybody get it? I'm gonna, trying to parallel this between spiritual and physical. The word of God is ammo. It's placed in weapons. Amen? Go to verse 1 in chapter 4. It says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Wow. So the, in your relationship in faith, there is a rest. Amen? So in this relationship with the Lord, because of faith is relationship. You can't have faith without a relationship. Amen? And, and the, the Bible says that Hearing of the word, the voice of God brings faith. and increase. Praying in tongues brings faith. So these are all opportunities to build your faith up. You can ask the Lord, Lord, increase my faith. Amen? But because their lack of faith in God's word, in, in the, what we call the ammunition, amen, there was no activation. They, didn't, they, they weren't able to utilize it. Rest is trust. No activation, no faith, 
No presence, no relationship, no activation. Does everybody get it? It's impossible. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians three four. Second Corinthians three four. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, the letter is the written word. It's words. But without the anointing on it, let me tell you, if you don't obey the word, will it kill you? You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the letter does kill, doesn't it? We just talked about it, how it penetrates. The Word of God penetrates. It's the discerner of thoughts and the heart. Goes into your spirit, soul, and body. It can bring healing, deliverance, and freedom. Why? Because it's ammunition. But it must be released. There must be weapons to put the, we the words of God in. Amen? Everybody Okay. So the letter kills with the spirit brings healing, life, and benefits of God Almighty. And Proverbs 29. Hallelujah. In verse 18. Proverbs 29, verse 18. It says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraints. That restraints is of the flesh. But happy is he who keeps the law. Let me tell you, revelation is a weapon to use the word of God, ammo, in. Does everybody get this? Revelation, this is where the word of God is put in. It's in put in what? Revelation. Remember, Peter got a revelation from Jesus. Amen, the Father. He said, my, no one has told you that but my Father in heaven. See, revelation is something that you and I hold on to. It's always available. It's in memory. It's there. We always hold on to revelation. Revelation. In revelation, in that moment, in something that occurred with you and God, in that revelation is the, is the ammo was placed in to be utilized. Does everybody get this? Revelation is a weapon to use the Word of God to put ammo in. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20. You know, one of the things we, we have a tendency to, you know, I'm not one that tries to memorize the Word of God. I believe truly that if you're decreeing the Word of God, it goes into your spirit, the Holy Spirit's the one. It's His responsibility to bring it to my remembrance. Does everybody get it? And He does. I don't need to, look, and tell the devil the location of the Word of God does no good. Look at 2 Corinthians verse 5 says, He doesn't care what the heck the location is. Your spirit, Jesus never said anything. He just said, it is written. Right? And then he spoke the word. He didn't tell what location it was. He doesn't, the devil has no effect on what the location of the word of God is. Hello? I remember locations. I don't care. I'm not one that goes to memorize. Does everybody understand it? I believe truly, if you do it enough times, it becomes a part of you. And the Holy Spirit brings it to remembrance. And that's his responsibility. But if there's relationship, he has a responsibility, and you have a responsibility. Amen? But you got to be consistent. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse 22. Now, Jehoshaphat, 
was a king, and uh, they were being attacked. And so they rose early in the morning and went out in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Is everybody with me? 2020, 2 Chronicles 20. Yeah. Where did I say to go? Oh. Verse 22. Yes, we can go there too. All right, let's start at verse 22. Now when they began to what? Sing and praise. The word set, the Lord set what? Ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sira, who had come against Judah, and they were what? They defeat. Now, can you put the weapons, the armor, the armor, ammunition in praise? Does everybody get it? So it's a weapon to put ammo in. Does everybody understand this? So when you and I praise and worship and we're singing the words and whatever, man, God's ambushing your enemies. Amen? And so people say, see, this is what emotional worshipers are. I don't feel like worshiping right now. You know, I was offended earlier today. It's all God's fault because you didn't answer me. Go ahead, miss the opportunity, dummy. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. All right, so look at this. Watch this now. Are you ready? Then the people of Ammon and Moab, then, okay, ready? 23. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Sira to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Sira, they helped to destroy one another. So the people of God didn't have to lift a sword. They just praised and worshiped. Why? Because that was their weapon. And in that weapon... It was armed with the words of God. Amen? Verse 24. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there was their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off of them themselves from more than they could carry away, and they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much more. Hello. Man, when we get this and understand that, revelation is a weapon to put God's words in. Amen? Praise and worship is a weapon to put God's words in. But if there's curses, there's no effect. Amen? Does everybody get it? There's no effect if there's curses. Hallelujah. Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 10. Let's speak it. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, the anointing, has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's through repentance. Blood's activated by repentance. And the word of their testimony, or their what? Revelations. How many of y'all know every testimony, I mean, every testimony is from a revelation? Does everybody get it? Somehow there's a revelation originated that brought what? Testimony. And they did not love their lives to death because they denied themselves constantly. So a testimony is what we call a decree. It's a what? Decree. So are you able to put God's words in a decree? then the decree, the testimony, is a weapon. Does everybody get it? See, we want to begin to look at some of these weapons to overcome, but again, you must first break the curses off so you are able to utilize these things that God has blessed us with. Hallelujah. Testimony of decree. Now, a testimony of decree, I want you to first look at it. It says, before they were given the testimony, it says that the power of his Christ. So the anointing, the touch, amen, the touch of the anointing, 
came and touched the word. The, the word was anointed. The testimony was anointed. Now the revelation was anointed. In that, the word of God was put in and able to go out and strike and destroy and penetrate, heal, deliver, whatever. The testimony of decree was touched by the anointing. We see it right here in his word. For the accuser, uh, he says, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren, the devil, powers of darkness, who accuses us day and night. And it says, and they overcame. Why? Because they were touched by the anointing. They were able to have a decree of testimony. They decreed the blood, and they denied themselves. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. John 1. Verse 14. John 1, verse 14. What does it say? And the what? And the word became physical or flesh, dwelt among us. I wish they would change this. Because the word didn't become flesh, it became physical. Think about this. Flesh is what? It's the offspring of darkness. Amen. Same thing with Christ. It should be anointed one and his anointing. But anyways. Only by the Spirit of God do we see these things. Amen. And desire these things. Oh, glory. Man, I sense the anointing so strong. I'm telling you. Whew. And the Word of God became physical flesh, what you want to call it, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, which is his plan of escape and truth. Hallelujah. So it became physical. Let's go to John 5. John chapter 5. Verse 1. Let's speak it together. After these, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Basidia, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. What's the water represent? The word. They're waiting for the touch of the activation of the anointing of the water. Does everybody get it? Jesus said, wash them with my what? Word. So the water represents the word. He said, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. So what did he do? He brought the anointing to the water. So it was a touch of the anointing to the water, which activated the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well and whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had already had been there in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him and said, sir, I have no man to put me into the wall pool when the water is stirred up or anointed. But while I am coming, another steps in before me. And Jesus said to him, rise and take your bed and get out of here. Immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and took off. And that was on the Sabbath. Oh, my goodness. He broke the law of religiosity. The stirring of the water was the anointing. It's touched by the anointing. The water is the word. Amen? So in that, when it was backed by the anointing, it will not return void. But see, you must believe this. 
You must have the faith to activate this. Amen? See, we have access through the blood. We are guided by the Spirit. And activation is in the name of Jesus. The manifestation is by the touch of the anointing. I'm going to say it again. So we have access to the blood, to everything, all benefits of God. Deliverance and healing, removal of demonic spirits. And we are guided by the Spirit. Our activation is in the name of Jesus, and our manifestation of all God's power is by the touch of the anointing. Not by a touch of a man's ability or remembrance. Proverbs 11. Do I need to say that again? We have access to the blood and guidance by the Spirit to all things of God. All of his storehouses, warehouses, all of his promises and benefits. Amen. And the activation of these things and all of his weapons. But see, the Bible says that you must purchase. There's an area where you must purchase gold from God. Refined in fire. Amen. Amen. He says, anoint your eyes with eye salve. See, you must purchase. How do you purchase things? Through praise and worship and through, through decree. That's why you speak the word. It's a price. The price must be, is cooperation in everything we do. In Proverbs 11 and verse 2. Touch of victory. Listen, you'll touch victory every time. That touch of victory is guaranteed by Jesus Christ. Victory over what? Sickness, disease, victory over bondages, victory over debt, victory over everything. In verse 2, let's speak it together. When pride comes, then comes shame. Is pride a killer? Yes. Remember Jesus said, I reject the proud and give grace to the what? Humble. So pride is a curse. When pride comes and comes shame, but with humble is what? Wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. The riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteous one, the righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their what? They'll be caught by their lust. When, the, when a wicked man dies, his expectations will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. I like that part. Praise God. Pride of is the, the pride of distraction nullifying activation. Pride is rebellion and witchcraft. It is a curse and is rejected by God, anyone who's prideful. It says it in the Word multiple times. And pride does nothing but does what? Rebels. Amen. I'm going to close at Romans 8. Romans 8, 28. Touch of victory. We can all have the access of touch of victory in everything we do. Just take some cooperation, doesn't it? You know, God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let me tell you, we got a lot of knowledge here to overcome. And a lot of victory in every area of our life. But we got to get to the sources, the originations of these curses, so that they're broke. Romans 8, 28, let's speak it. 
And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, which means that if you love Him, you obey Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called. Whom He called, these He also justified. And whom He justified, these He also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? A touch of victory in everything we do. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you seal this revelation today into everyone's heart. Bring to remembrance what was spoken and released. That we may be able to use the armor, I mean the, uh, the ammo of, of, the, of your word and place it into the weapons you've given us. Lord, we are honored and blessed. Prepare our hearts for communion. And we will bring our tithes into your house. And our offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.